And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, out there in the internet land. This is your friend, Charlie Hunter. And it is the Reasonably Fine Art Talk for, what is it? It's October 4th, 10-4. 10-4, good buddy, if you remember the CD, CB, CB radio craze of the 1980s. Anyway, uh, welcome to the Reasonably Fine Art Talk. I am just back from uh, Planet Air Smokies, Planet Air Smokies in Knoxville, really Maryville, spelled Maryville, but uh, pronounced Marvel, Marvel, Tennessee, uh, except this year we were based out of a motel like two miles from uh, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park entrance. And what I figure, it, it seems like people really enjoy uh, kind of seeing how an event went from uh, the artist's point of view, because uh, I know a lot of a lot of the audience for this is is people who enjoy painting and are thinking of maybe getting starting to do these plein air events. And if you are a aspiring plein air painter, I would highly recommend uh, that you check out Plein Air Smokies in 2024 next year. It is September 22nd through 28th, uh, and it you can both apply to, for the main event, or you can just show up and register for the quick paint on Saturday. And the winner of the quick paint gets uh, automatically included in the artist for the next year's event. So uh, keep think about if this event is right for you. Because it turns out that Marble, Tennessee, is about five hours from many, many cities. Because uh, I like taking trains, you know, and I could take the train to within five hours of about four places from Marble, but you can't take a train to Knoxville because we have a messed up transportation system in this country. But that isn't the topic today. The topic is the. Uh, the uh, plein air Smokies. Um, so Knoxville is the big city that we're near. Marvel is the place where the gala takes place. And Townsend is the town outside of the boundary of the Smokies. I'll try to be fairly quick today because I do know when I start we start those conversational interviews. Uh, it tends to go for an hour, uh, which is fun, but uh, can be lengthy. So I'll give you a whirlwind tour of Plein Air Smokies uh, 2023. Now this scene here is uh, Hyatt Lane, which is my favorite place to paint in the Smokies because uh, the Smokies are basically at least the area of the Smokies called Cades Cove, which is where a couple of days of painting take place, is bumper to bumper traffic, except for these two. There's, there's Hyatt Lane and Sparks Lane, which are cutoff roads that go between two points in the loop. And they are considerably less busy. Uh, my favorite place to paint. So day one, day one, we started out with, and I have to remember what I am doing here. I am going to go to, I'm going to get rid of my head altogether. Uh, let's just go to the big screen. Um, this is painted on Hyatt Lane. It is me just warming up. I am using my usual palette of uh, raw umber, Cobra water mixable, raw umber and a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. Uh, later in the week, I get crazy with other colors, but uh, but but uh, the first day I just start out with a simple thing. And I start out basically, this is a six by 12 and I am painting what I know how to do easily. Uh, so I don't intimidate myself by trying to swing for the fences. Um, couple of questions people have asked. Uh, do you have to pay for the motel and all other costs yourself at plein air shows? On this event, this is a remarkable event in that they most plein air events provide uh, host housing. This event 
provides you a motel room, which is great because we all, at, in the evening, a bunch of us would have dinner together and then go hang out at the motel together. You know, have a beer sit, sitting on the steps outside and then go to go to sleep by about 8.30. Um, so anyway, so this was my goal every day is to paint two paintings, uh, a morning painting and an afternoon painting. So day one, I want to start out simple, do what I know how to do, don't intimidate myself. And I did. I was very happy with this painting, uh, kept things simple, paid attention to the big shapes and, uh, you know, kept the, the design on the car is very, very simple, did what I wanted it to do. Next slide, please, Charles. Oh, the great Betty Sue, ladies and gentlemen. She is uh, in Little Rock, Arkansas tonight for two nights with James McMurtry, uh, ending up, finishing up her, her summer tour uh, about I don't know, 60 dates uh, with the James McMurtry band. She was the support act. This was my second painting. Uh, this painting is called, uh, I'm Aware There's a Bear Over There. Now, why, you might ask, is this painting called that? Well, before I go into that, this is a 10 by 20. So I'm, I'm, I'm working bigger, uh, trying to gradually move into painting bigger. Uh, the goal is small morning painting, large afternoon, larger afternoon painting. Uh, again, keeping it simple, trying not to intimidate myself. This is looking down Hyatt Lane at a bridge. Uh, and it was called, I'm aware there's a bear over there, because as I was painting it, uh, a young black bear stopped by. And the young black bear, the young black bear, looked at me and said, do you have any snacks? And I said, no, I just have black coffee. And he said, well, then I'll see you later. And he went around, around over there to the right. And I was painting and every time a car would bump over the bridge, it would then slow down and pull up next to me and say, there's a bear, do you know there's a bear over there? And I would say, I'm aware. And eventually, uh, someone leaving said, well, you take care. And then I wrote a little song to the tune of uh, She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain uh, called I'm Aware There's a Bear Over There. And this was that painting that resulted. Next slide, please, Charles. There's the bear, a young bear. He was a good guy. I saw him several days. He never bothered me one bit. Nice, nice bear. A lot of bears there. They cause traffic jams. This was the first piece on day two. Uh, fence line. Uh, I started thinking about Andrew Wyeth a lot during this event. Um, because, as many of you know, I normally paint a lot of structures. Couldn't really do that uh, at this event because there are only a few structures in the park and a bunch of them are in Elkmont, which we'll get to later. Uh, but in Cades Cove on this loop, all the structures are on the main road. And that means there are millions of people there. And if you set up to paint the structures, you'd have to be talking with people all the time. I do not mind talking to people at all uh, when we are, when it's just a few people, but if it's nonstop and the sound of car wheels right behind you, that would make me crazy. Um, I am checking the comments to just see if there's, there are a whole bunch of people saying hello, hello everybody, and hello, you all say hello to one another. Um, but anyway, I, so I started thinking about who, uh, painter, who do I really admire who painted the natural world? Obviously, uh, Wyeth. Um, and so I started thinking about how, you know, Wyeth would have these iconic paintings of basically one object. And there were the, there were the, the fence rows were in front of me and the fence rows are beautiful. They're, they don't serve any agricultural purpose. They serve to keep the humans from wandering into the managed 
you know, the, the mowings and the, the woods and they just keep the humans in line. But uh, I really loved the rawness of the fence posts and the wires. And this painting, you know, I, I, I scrunched into the wet paint with the heel of a rigger brush. That's what the white line on top is. The bottom, the bottom fence line, the bottom wire is a rigger and the top line is the heel of the rigger. Uh, obviously I'm using the squeegee to get the sharp differentiation of light and dark on those verticals. Uh, this painting is really about the interplay of the, the, the man-made fence posts and, and wires versus the stylized natural uh, background. And I'm thinking a lot also, Wyeth and 1960s illustrators, a la Bernie Fuchs, with their sort of stylized uh, enforced perspective that they're using. Now, is Seth the only one watching from Tennessee? I bet you aren't the only one watching from Tennessee, but who knows? Um, okay. Now, you can see also a bit more chroma in this. So this is day two, first painting. I have my basic raw umber and Van Dyke brown. And then I've also got out on my palette uh, transparent oxide red and olive green. So those are, those are extraordinarily harmonious colors to the colors I'm already using, but it lets me force color force the chroma a little further one direction than it would otherwise. The only place you can you, that you immediately notice this is on that central uh, fence post. To the right of that, the, the harmony changes from the greenish right next to the, the dark, dark hunter green, uh, right next to the fence post to the reddish cast of the transparent oxide red and then it goes back to the browns. Uh, so I, I'm, again, I'm just trying to introduce interesting elements to keep me working hard so I'm not just doing the same thing over and over again in my paintings. Uh, to keep me engaged while not intimidating myself and getting into my head too much. So Monday, second piece. Uh, so after fence line, I came down here to my favorite tree. I love this tree. Uh, I have learned it's a burr oak. Um, this was one of my favorite paintings of the week and it's one of the two that didn't sell. So that, that also, ladies and gentlemen, never be intimidated by the fact that your paintings, your favorite paintings don't sell. Sometimes your favorite paintings don't sell. Um, Six by 12, once again, you can see the greenish and reddish elements added in. Uh, I am trying to keep things as simple as possible. This is very much a portrait of that tree. Note how I'm letting go of all the background, really. Uh, and I, I, you know, it's, it's the big mast shape of the tree trunk and then the lightness of the uh, foliage to its left. Again, I am checking uh, the messages. Um, everything seems fine. And on Monday, I was on fire since that first one was a six by 12 fence line. This one was a six by 12. Uh, I got done at like 3.30 and, you know, then you get that beautiful late afternoon light. So I went and I did a third one. My third piece on Monday. This is off of Sparks Lane. This is the paddock where the horses that are, you can get trail rides where the horses live. Um, there is my setup. It is a Soltec easel uh, and my various brushes, including the two inch chip brush from the hardware store and then some inexpensive uh, black silver by Dynasty uh, brushes. They're a synthetic flat. Uh, Simply Simmons is very similar. 
rosemary evergreen or rosemary ivories are similar except much higher quality. I prefer the cheaper ones because they really get beat during a week of plein air painting because I don't wash them well. I just rinse them out in that bowl of water. Uh, and so they end up with a lot of paint in them. It's rough on brushes and I'd rather use inexpensive brushes that I can easily replace rather than good quality studio brushes. Uh, I know how these behave. I'm very used to them. Uh, I see there is a Princeton Aspen rigger. That's my big rigger. Then there's a toothbrush for spattering. Uh, then there's another black silver. Then there's a stimudent. That's that little toothpicky looking thing. Uh, those are very good for preventing gingivitis and also excellent for scraping into wet surfaces. Um, and then next to that is one of those keys that you get from pre-stretched canvases. They don't know what to do with. I like them for scraping. Uh, then there is a palette light knife, my new traveling palette knife, which is my favorite palette knife. I am afraid I'm going to break if I take it with me because I've had it for like 35 years. It's now going to live at my studio. This is a Gamblin palette knife purchased from our little, our little store in Bellows Falls, Vermont. We now have an art supply store. It's a little art supply store, and it's called the Little Art Supply Store. Uh, and it's wonderful to have an art supply store in town, and I'm trying to buy as much as possible from them so that uh, they, I'm doing my part to keep them healthy. Then uh, nesting in those paper towels, there is uh, a paint scraper, um, or it's a, it's, it's a razor blade scraper. Uh, that has a piece of squeegee mounted in the place where the razor blade would normally be. That was gifted to me by a Canadian. The Canadians are very innovative people. And uh, the Canadian gave me that, and I've actually, I use it quite a bit. Then right below the, um, right below the palette knife is a kind of credit card sized squeegee that I bought online in a pack from, I, I, I decided to check and see how many different kinds of squeegees I could find uh, online from Amazon, from the Beast. Uh, and these little credit card size squeegees are pretty good and inexpensive. And I think I will, when I teach workshops, I will offer them uh, to students because all the students want small squeegees. And I've started using them more. Uh, then after that is the classic Ettore, six inch brass window washer squeegee, still my favorite. Uh, you can order it from uh, Hunter Studio. Uh, I should put up that banner somewhere. There we go. Hunterstudio.com, that's where you get those uh, Etoré squeegees, because if you order them uh, from my webpage, you get, I get a little tiny kickback. Thank you very, very much. Um, let's see. Here's a question. Have I ever modified my brushes? Hey, I never know how to pronounce your name, message, but uh, it's great to see you. Um, no, I never, I never modify my brushes that way. I just let them wear out and they start doing interesting things on, on their own. Um, and Catherine says, hello from Friends of the Smokies. Thanks for this amazing recap. That is the correct thing to say, Catherine, as opposed to thank you for this indifferent recap. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. So anyway, I had this beautiful light. Um, did this third painting is my least favorite painting of the week. That's okay. That was three. I had to get three paintings done one day because one of the neat things, one of the neat things about Plein Air Smokies is that it was um, Buddy Odom and Kathy Odom, who have been guests on this show, they were uh, engaged by the Friends of the Smokies, the organization that puts this event on. They were engaged by them to help as consultants, basically, 
for getting the event going. And one of the ideas they suggested was that the painters, there'd be one night where the painters all trade paintings. Uh, so we swap, you don't worry about framing the painting, uh, just one night. It's basically a Yankee, it's, it's a Yankee swap without the give back thing. Um, you just put in a painting, everybody else puts in a painting and then you draw lots and are assigned the paintings. But it's a neat way for us to add to our collections. I got a Richie Vios this year, which was terrific. And uh, I think the Buffalo farmer, Steve, uh, got this painting. Um, anyway, I call this the, uh, I call that swap the, uh, give, the give away the painting you like the least, give away your crappiest painting uh, night. So anyway, it, 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 this wasn't a great painting, I don't think. Um, I don't like, it just isn't that lyrical to me. It's, it's competent, but it doesn't do anything that sends me anywhere. Next slide, please, Charles. Okay, I'm going to get rid of my head again. Okay, Tuesday, first piece, 10 by 20. I am starting, I'm trying to push myself here. I'm trying to think why if I'm forcing the horizon line way up. I am stylizing the ground, obviously. You know, I'm, I'm cutting across with the light, uh, using the squeegee for, for, for that, uh, really simplifying the big shapes in the immediate right foreground into just a blast of light. Um, it, it, I was not thrilled with this piece, but I, it was good enough. I found it acceptable enough, uh, though it would not be one of my competition pieces. At this event, uh, you you uh, at this event you submit two pieces to the for judging, and the rest are just put up on the on the wall. So this I am using uh, transparent oxide yellow, olive green, transparent oxide red. A little, even a little bit of um, ultramarine blue in the foreground and in some of the mountains in the background. But again, I'm trying to do a mix of naturalistic and highly stylized mark making. How do I, how do I tell a story that hasn't been told a million times before? What don't what don't you like? What don't you like on this painting? I don't like how sharp the light dark, how, how sharp the squeegee marks are in kind of the middle ground. Um, it, I don't like how the two trees are basically both at the same angle. But, you know, that's, that's fairly inside baseball. I'm essentially happy with the painting. Otherwise, I would have uh, not even put it in the show. Um, Steven, yes, great painting with you as well. We had so much fun. It was so much fun at this event, ladies and gentlemen, because we got to hang out together. We never get to do that. And the Plein Air Smokies people, I think, are fairly apologetic that they're putting us up at a motel. Um, they shouldn't be. It, it was wonderful. It was a simple motel. It's called the Townsend Gateway Motel or the Townsend Gateway Inn in Townsend, Tennessee. It's a simple motel, but it was spotlessly clean. There was daily housekeeping service. If you wanted your sheets changed every day, they would have done it for you. Um, I, there was no need for that, but uh, you know, fresh towels every day. Uh, beautiful, beautiful motel. I highly recommend it, ladies and gentlemen. I highly recommend the Townsend Gateway Inn. Next slide, please, Charles. Okay, gonna get rid of my head again now. So I this is this is the magic of cell phones. Um, I started to really find myself fascinated with depicting trees at this event because there are a lot of trees in the Smokies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and so going online, you know, just just clicking through on the phone looking at various Wyeths. How did Wyeth approach trees? Look at that Wyeth on the upper left there. Look at it, that sycamore tree, it's amazing. 
It's amazing, but look how he forces the perspective, drops the horizon line way low, forces the perspective up of having the, the foreshortening being really extreme on the tree trunk, and then the darkness of that shadow behind the uh, tree itself. Now, his work is in the second picture there is a whole bunch of other YS that just show up on the, the cell phone when you do YS image tree. Um, he would have taken days, weeks, months working on these paintings. These are studio paintings as opposed to uh, plein air pieces where I'm working in one afternoon. But his work was utterly an, an inspiration this, this past week. Um, and so the next picture there, next slide, please, Charles. That was my second piece on Tuesday in that same paddock area where I had painted the, uh, the, the gate, the horse gate the day before. Um, I'm gonna go back. That was the scene, uh, the photograph of, of the painting in the scene. That obviously is the tree that I was working from. Uh, and the resulting painting was this. This was a, this is a 12 by 24, which is as large as I bring with me. Um, and there are parts of it that I love and there are parts of it I don't love. It's a lot clunkier, my, my tree trunks or my tree branches are a lot clunkier than Wyeth, but Wyeth was Wyeth, you know? Um, I am happy with kind of the drama I've got going. And if you look at the lower left, there is a bunch of stippling done with toothbrush where there'll be paint, spatter it with water, let it sit for a minute, uh, then press paper towel against it, lift, and then once the water is fully dried, go over it with a big rosemary blender uh, brush that, that, you know, the Badger blender, those huge, it's a huge rosemary. It's number 37 blender, uh, beautiful, big, maybe three inch uh, blender brush and just smooth it, leaves a wonderful uh, effect. The spattering you can see very clearly on the left, I mean on the lower lower right, uh, that's hitting it with uh, either the plant sprayer or the toothbrush dipped in water, letting the droplets set for a moment on the wet paint and then pulling off with a paper towel. So trying to use a lot of effects to keep the two-dimensional uh, scene visually interesting, you know, so the eye moves across it and doesn't get told the same story over and over again. This is on an ampersand gesso board, uh, which is a wonderful surface. Uh, very, very smooth. My, the surfaces I make by hand are gator board or, or cradle wood panels uh, with muslin on top. Um, which are lightweight, uh, especially if it's the gator board. They're lightweight, you can cut them to any size. Um, they have a bit of tooth because of the muslin uh, and that is a wonderful surface, but the ampersand is a wonderful smooth surface if smooth is what you are going for. Uh, so when I when I go to one of these events, this, this event, all I did was bring six, six inch by 12 inch 10 by 20 and 12 by 24. And I brought a few ampersand panels of each and I brought a few uh, handmade panels of each. All right, next slide please, Charles. So on Wednesday, I'm gonna get rid of myself again because there's too much going on if I'm in there. On Wednesday, we are assigned to paint, oh, Tuesday. Tuesday, we were assigned to paint in Cades Cove. Uh, so that's why I, I, as I said, I do not go to the, I do not stay on the main road. I go to those either Hyatt Lane or Sparks Lane, the two cut acrosses 
that have much, much less traffic. Uh, on Wednesday, we were assigned to Elkmont. Elkmont is a town, uh, was a settlement at the end of the railroad line that went from uh, Maribel, to keep a long story short, it went from Maribel to Townsend and then up into what is now the park to a logging camp called Elkmont. Uh, I'm going to put myself back in for a second because I'm going to be blathering for a moment. Um, it was fascinating. I, on, on Friday, I had nothing to do. Uh, my one criticism of the event. On Friday, I had nothing to do. So I went to the uh, museums uh, about the park, including the Railroad Museum in Townsend. And I learned Mr. Townsend, who ran the lumber company and got the town named after him, he was no fool, ladies and gentlemen. He was no fool. He paid like $1.50 an acre for 100,000 acres, logged the hell out of it from, you know, 1880 to 1920, uh, then sold, <laughs> sold the land, said it should be a park, it should be a park, sold the land to the government at $3.50 an acre, so double what he paid for it, and then also in that deal kept logging rights for another 20 years. Anyway, so that was, that was Mr. Townsend, and he was he was involved in setting up these, this camp. Uh, it had been a logging camp, and then when it started getting logged out, they started bringing wealthy people from, or they started bringing people from Knoxville up into the mountains to relax uh, for the weekends. And they took the former logging camp of Elkmont and turned it into a private getaway for the wealthy of uh, Knoxville, uh, in which there are a bunch of houses behind me, small cabins really wonkily constructed because they were brought up on railway cars and another long story, but a uh, bunch of cabins. And then their clubhouse was this. This is the, uh, the, the, the what's it called? It's not the Adirondack Club, the Appalachian, the Appalachian Club or something like that. Um, but it is a cool building and it's easy to park and just paint out of the back of your car. This is where being gimpy is really helpful because you can see I'm parked in the handicapped spot. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to have that view and no one's going to be able to park right next to me. Um, the light doesn't really show up there until late morning. Um, so, got a question here. Derek asks, do you think squeegee would work with slow dry acrylics? Have I tried it? Um, I certainly use the squeegee with uh, acrylics in the studio. Uh, I don't like acrylics for plein air painting. Plein air, of course, just meaning painting outdoors. Uh, to me, uh, acrylics just set up too quickly. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the studio, absolutely, uh, you can use the squeegee. The Appalachian Clubhouse. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, anyway, I, I, we, we, we were up here last year. We were up here and there was no coffee. This is a very, very well run event, ladies and gentlemen. Last year we were up here. It was cold. It was dark. As I said, the light doesn't show up until. 11 a.m. It was cold, it was dark, and there was no coffee. And this year, there was coffee, there were snacks, there was fruit, there was lunch, there was a ranger who gave a history program about the Appalachian Club. It was terrific. It's, it's a really well-run event. Next slide, please. Wednesday, second piece. Okay, get rid of myself again. Only momentarily. I'm going to come back in a second. Second piece on Wednesday. Uh, I started to do a second painting at the Appalachian Club. It felt like I was just doing what I know how to do. And I was not impressed with myself, so I wiped it down. 
Not something I generally do. Generally, I will keep thrashing away at something, but I just, it felt bogus. Um, so I then checked the schedule and realized I didn't have to be there in the afternoon. So I started back down the twisty road, which used to be the logging railroad. And there are a million vistas like the vista on our left here. Um, it follows the little river. It's absolutely gorgeous rocks and trees and water. Now, all of you know, I do not paint rocks and trees and water. But as I said, this event, I just, I really got into the idea of the, of, of, of trying to get better at painting trees uh, and taking another six inch by 12 inch amp. This is an ampersand gesso board. Uh, this was my afternoon painting, very stylized, very stylized. Um, you know, it, it, I almost called it boomerang because of the graphic device that I use of that triangle coming in from the left and going to the right and very important a very important part of this design i just want to point out not that it's so genius but just it would i don't think it would work at all without it is if you look on the very far right the one dot of substrate color the white dot that's kind of midway down, very far to the right. I think that's absolutely crucial. That is, in effect, the point of the triangle, right? Um, if it wasn't there, try putting your finger over that. I think it just makes it a lot more static. Uh, but this this has great, I, it has interesting action in it. Um, one of the delightful things, uh, really, complimented uh, is that my friends Buddy and Kathy Odom purchased this piece at the opening. Um, do note on the upper left on this, the very sharp, dark brown, the, the first passage, there's a wipe mark going from kind of the center toward the upper left. That is just paper, one pass of paper towel pulling through a dark painted area. Uh, and I like that mark a lot. Um, starting to try to figure out how the water works, how to paint water has never been one of my strong points. Uh, also doing a lot with spattering in the left foreground of this. Uh, I, had a, I had a good, I felt really happy about this painting. You can see the bits of transparent oxide red mixed in with the, the usual slurry that I use. And Thursday, oh, only one piece. Now, this would be my, we're starting to enter the criticism portion of the program, but it'll be pretty short. Um, on Thursday, we had to turn our paintings in between noon and five on Thursday in Marville, which is 25 mile, 25 minutes uh, from, from where we were staying. So Thursday morning essentially had to be spent on, um, on getting your framing done. And that means, you know, wiring with AM canvases, I mean, the, the frames and, you know, it, it, it takes all morning. So I got done with my framing up to that point at about, I don't know, 11.30, went and got a bite to eat, then went up into the park and did this pretty quick painting uh, of, again, I've gotten really interested in the water and the rocks, and I'm very happy with how the water works in this. Um, it was a thick application of paint over on the left, uh, to going to much thinner, a lot of brushing with the rosemary blender from dark to light, uh, and then spattering in the lower right with the paper, with the uh, plant sprayer, again letting it sit, and that 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 was on the tailgate. I, I let it sit horizontally uh, on the tailgate of of the vehicle I had rented. 
so that the water wouldn't drip, wouldn't run down. So it's set it, the water is from the spatter is setting on top of the wet paint. It eats into the paint. And then I put a piece of paper towel down and pull it, pull, you know, remove uh, with the paper towel and it leaves that nice spatter. Um, Wendy says, Wendy, and I hope you're feeling better, Wendy. In the painting, I don't read it as water, but she doesn't care. I don't care. If you don't care, I don't care, Wendy. How about that? Um, well, I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do, Wendy. Uh, I will point out, I will say that when I painted, when I put this up at the uh, event, at the gala, uh, someone said that they loved the little building on the right. It's supposed to be rocks, so I've got a ways to go. There's no little building on the right. I've got a ways to go yet, ladies and gentlemen, but um, it, 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 I've learned enough that if someone says they love the little building, I'm just going to smile and nod. I'm not going to tell them that they are wrong. Uh, it doesn't seem like there are any other... Jan, my friend Jan Sheehy, I love the water in this one. It is really moving. Yes. I, I mean, I, I think you mean uh, it is It is not moving emotionally. Well, hopefully it's moving emotionally, but it also looks like it is moving. That was my, uh, that was my goal. The photograph here, I, I, before I move on to the next painting, um, the photograph here is uh, a, with the cell phone. I very often will just take a quick snapshot at the beginning of a painting and turn it to silver silver tone or whatever it is on the iPhone. And that renders it into black and white, pretty high contrast. And I can basically see if it's going to, if, it, if it's telling the story I, I, I would be aspiring to, uh, to want to tell. It just gives me a, a bit of reference. I really don't consult it again after starting painting unless I feel like I'm way off of where I want to be. It, it kind of can center me back to what I was thinking of doing. Um, the, key, the key thing in this to me was the light dark contrast between the tree, the tree branches and the water. Yeah. But my the spray blot technique work with acrylics. Yes, it would. It, I don't see any reason it wouldn't. Um, Donna saw building two. Robert saw building two. Diane thought it was a wonky house. Wendy saw a building. All right, so if everybody sees a building, again, smile and nod, smile and nod. And here we are at the opening, at the gala. Um, so Friday, this is, this is, I'm gonna put my head back for a moment. This is my criticism. This is my criticism, ladies and gentlemen. On Friday, and it's a, the organizers had a very interesting idea, which was to go to a bunch of their patrons and say, will you commission a piece? And you get to decide what the subject matter is. And they got 12 of the patrons to say yes. And there are 20 of us painters. Then they went to us painter, at the same time they went to us painters and said, will you do a commission? Uh, it's gu a guaranteed sale, but it's of something that these people are gonna, that our patrons are going to select and you're going to paint it. Well, I don't really like doing commissions. Me and Tim Kelly, uh, I don't, it makes me nervous to be expected to paint something that may or may not move me. So I elected not to put my name into that hat. As it turned out, as I said, there were only 12 uh, patrons who wanted, uh, who wanted commissions. So there were eight of us who were not doing, and, and that was, those commissions were supposed to be done on Friday before the gala. For the eight of us who were not participating in 
the commission thing. We had the day free, which is fine, which is fine, but we are, we're at work. You know, we're, we're down here. We're small business people on assignment and we want to paint. And the organizers said, uh, anything you do today, it can't be part of the show. And I, that was not preferable. On the other hand, it's a real first world problem. Um, it just, I got to go to museums, which was great. And I was lucky enough to, uh, to, uh, sell well. So I'm going to get rid of myself here and still look at myself. Here we are at the gala. Now this is the outer room. There's an inner room beautifully set up, beautifully lit with two pieces from each artist that were our competition pieces. These were the pieces that were not our competition pieces. These pieces were just set up for sale. And then the inset photo is after the first hour, all I had left was my painting of the burr oak tree, which surprised me because it was one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite uh, paintings. Now the frames, you may notice, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is a different frame than what I've usually used at plein air events. In the past, I've used an inexpensive uh, frame that I got from Jerry's Artorama called Ambiance Galleria Wood Frames. Uh, that they've got about a half inch, a half inch frame, and they're an inch and a half deep. They're clip in, uh, inexpensive. They do the job, which is the real job of a frame is to protect the painting and protect the painting. Um, the decorative element of a frame isn't really necessary. But I figured this event, I would try, I'm going to put my head back now, I would try uh, using a frame from uh, JFM. Uh, the guy who runs JFM, Patrick, is a wonderful person who is always helpful at plein air events that he's at. He will help you. He'll help wire your frames, even if you got your frames elsewhere. And so I figured I would patronize his business. And so I ordered, I pre-ordered the 6x12s, 10x20s, and 12x24 frames. And... You know, I think they looked pretty darn nice. Um, I think the frame really works well. So if you're looking for a plein air frame, talk to Patrick at JFM and say whatever it was that Charlie's using. Those that that's what I want. Um, that that's that's okay with me. All right. Um, and Wendy says the wider frame shows off your work well. I agree. I think it does work well. Uh, and I probably will keep using, I, I think certainly I'm going to keep using these frames at plein air events. On Saturday, we have the quick paint. Um, so the gala was a big success. I did not win one of the prizes, but I did not disagree at all with, uh, with, with the judges' choices. They were terrific choices. There were a lot of terrific paintings. Uh, on Saturday, it's quick paint. Any time, any you can paint anything downtown from nine to eleven. Another shout out to the event organizers. I'm going to put my head back in for a second. Another shout out to the event organizers for a great thing is last year at the at the quick paint, they said um, we're going to have snacks and and coffee, and they only had coffee, and that meant that some of us arrived expecting scones and there were no scones, there was just coffee. And so we became hangry. We became hangry and we had to go to Mickey D's before the quick paint started to eat something so we would not become psychotic. Fortunately, this year, they, 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 had, they had scones and they were delicious scones and they had coffee. So we had coffee and scones and then I set up uh, in a parking lot. Downtown Maryville is very big on parking lots. Um, and 
I set up in a parking lot next to my friend Shelby and a couple of Jehovah's Witnesses who you can see vaguely in the park bench in the lower left of this of, of the painting. Uh, and I chose this scene because the light was interesting. The light also was conducive. I could set up my car, park my car at an angle, and the car essentially became a light block against the transit of the sun during the morning. That's very important when you're doing a quick paint. Uh, and just, I, 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 there was enough depth, there was enough interest in different shapes in the painting that I knew I could do, you know, big shapes on the left and right, and then do the simulation of detail in the center. Uh, and I really, I made a few preliminary marks on the canvas. Uh, this is a 12 by 24, uh, one of the muslin on gator board pieces. Uh, and then I just basically worked across the surface and managed to get uh, that piece done. And it won the grand prize, or not the grand prize, but the quick paint prize. Uh, let's see here. Kelly says, JFM is great for odd size canvases as well. Quality is always good. Yes, they will custom make uh, frames. They're a frame wholesaler. They, they, it's best if you buy a bunch of frames from them, uh, but they will make uh, whatever size you order. And Wendy had one more comment. Interesting human being, your quick paint's your most complicated scene. Well, there weren't any, there weren't any buildings where I was. What do I attach the muslin to the gator board with? I attached that with uh, Amsterdam, made by Royal Talons North America. I attach it with Amsterdam uh, binder, acrylic binder, uh, which is basically, it's like a gloss, it, it, it's like a, it has the consistency of a gloss medium. Um, it, I use it also for uh, sizing. Uh, the, the muslin before putting the gesso down. Um, anyway, so that's that's a tour through uh, the, the 2023 plein air Smokies. It's a beautifully run event. Uh, I it, it, in two years has gone from you know not existing to being one of the premier events in the country. Again, I would highly recommend. If you are interested in, you know, doing these events, look into applying for next year. I think Mark Boges is the uh, is the juror, so that's a rather a high bar. Uh, but if you don't, you, well, there are a lot of bars around there, not bars, but bears. There are a lot of bears around there. But uh, Mark, it's a high bar with Mark Boges uh, as the juror. But if you don't get in, at least uh, go and and register for the quick paint. It's an open quick paint, and the winner of the quick paint gets invited to the next year's uh, the next year's event. Uh, there and there's both the open category and the profession, the invited artists or the the juried artists category. So I'm in for next year. I'm not going to be able to go because I've, I'm gonna go out to the Buffalo Bill uh, Western Art Show in Cody, Wyoming uh, and paint out in Montana and stuff before that. Uh, but it is a terrific, it's a terrific event. Uh, as I say, beautifully run, not a lot of green vegetables, not a lot of green vegetables down there in East Tennessee. I mean, there are green vegetables, but the restaurants really like, I had a lot of white gravy, just put it that way. I had a lot of white gravy and a little bit portly coming back. But it's a truly wonderful, wonderful event. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that's been interesting. Um, you take it easy. We'll be back next week. We'll be back next week with another reasonably fine art talk. Take good care. We'll see you soon.